Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to be working on this dish rag and wash rag set. Dish towel, wash rag, wash towel, rag, I don't care what you call it, it's what this is. <laughs> so you're going to need a couple of things to get started. I didn't weave in my ends yet. You're going to need a 5 millimeter hook, scissors, a yarn needle, you're going to need a tape measure because we got a little bit of measuring to do, and get you a stitch marker, which doesn't have to be this. You can use a, a, just another piece of yarn, what have you, it doesn't matter. And you're going to need a cone for, for each color. So like for this set, I have three different cones. I have the pink that I got from Craft Cotton. Or, um, geez, that I got from Hirschner's. <laughs> and this pink is called, is Yarn, Village Yarn Craft Cotton. It's a 100% cotton for apply. And the color Dragon Fruit. And then I have this color. Couldn't find the label. Village Yarn, 100% cotton, in the color Shoreline, and then I've got stuff scattered everywhere. This cone, the variegated, is uh, Village Yarn Craft Cart Cotton from Hirschner's in the color Cabana. Now, having said that, you guys, for the... Um, colors that you choose for the wash rag you don't need a whole cone of that so like for the wash rag center color and then the border of the dish towel um, you don't have to have a whole cone for that same with the blue um, but I do recommend you get plenty of your variegated color or whatever color you choose to be the main part of your uh, dish towel because it corner to corner does take up a lot of yarn, use up a lot of yarn, I should say. Um, so I'd say at least get a cone of your main color and then your side colors get a cup. I'd say, oh, I'd say to be on the safe side, maybe of each, your two side colors, I would get Uh, at least 300 yards just and then get a look get another one to be on the safe side <laughs> nothing's worse than having a project going and running out of yarn <laughs> that I oh that drives me insane and then you can't find it and yeah okay so get your guys's supplies together oh I guess I should tell you one of these cones is 743 yards and this is what I have left of the variegated from our uh, dish towel. But anyway, get your stuff together and let's get started. Okay, so before we get started with our wash rag, I want to take a minute and kind of explain corner to corner and the concept. Just for any of my viewers that, you know, never tried it or don't know what they're, you know, don't know what it is or what have you. I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page. I don't want to leave anybody behind. So I got a little wash rag here as my as my example <laughs> to show you guys. So basically there's a, several different ways but the main two ways to make a square so the first is you know obviously you work your chain and then you go back and forth back and forth back and forth and then the other way is you start in the middle and you come around and around and around and then you have a square but on corner to corner, it's little blocks. So we work from one corner with a block, and we come out, and come out, and come out, and we just keep making blocks back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until we get, you know, the diagonal size we want. So like on this, you'd go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then this is where, you know, we would determine, I like the 
the link from this corner to this corner. Oh, not on camera. From this corner to this corner. Like, so it's the same here. We go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then whenever, you know, we get from this corner to this corner and you decide that's the length I'd like to have, which in this case is about eight inches. So whenever I'm working this and I decide, okay, how, you know, how long is the bottom eight inches. So then I'd come here and I'd see, okay, so it's going to be 11 from top corner to bottom corner, right? So once we get to that, to that point, you know, where we like the length across the bottom, then we start working it and we're going to start decreasing until we get to our last little block on that corner. And that's how we get our corner to corner. I hope that helps. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not an expert at explaining stuff, but that's the basic concept of corner to corner. Now, when we work our dish towel, there's, I'm going to add an um, extra little step in there to, we'll, we're going to go from, we're going to work it, continue working back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until we like the length at the bottom, right? And then we're going to take these two corners and we're going to work them up this way until we get to a good height a good length we like. I'll explain more when we do that, but first let's start with this wash rag. So we're going to get a slip knot on our hook. And we're going to start with a chain of six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So you can see our six chains. And we're going to count back three. So there's our first, one, one, two, and three. Now into the fourth, we're going to work a double. And you should have two chains remaining. We're going to work a double into each of those. Now this is the All of the our corner to corner is going to consist of this block. Three double crochets and our chain three right here. So this is the, the um, let me show you. So this is our first corner, our first little block. So that was row one. So in row two, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to add a block. And that's how it goes from one, two, three, four, and so on. And every row is going to start just like this. Chain six, two, three, four, five, six. I'll hold that little block and I'm going to turn it. So we're going to count back one, two, three, and into the fourth we start, oops, I just split that we start our block. So there's one double, two double, we got one more little chain right there, three double. Now remember when I was talking, the way we work corner to corner, we come out and we just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Well, you see how it's a straight line on this edge and a straight line on this edge? It's not so straight, right? So he's just kind of wobbling around. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay him right on top of there. So here's our straight edge. So the way we get that to lay down is we're going to go right, un right underneath that chain three. And we're going to slip stitch. So now see how we've got that straight edge. So the more, as we continue going, that straight edge is going to continue across. So we, to start our second square or block, we're going to chain three and work three double crochet around that chain three space. One, two, and three. 
So now you can kind of see our corner, right? See how we're going to keep this edge straight? And then as we go up, this edge is going to stay straight. Once you guys get the hang of this, you're going to fly right through it. Okay, so we're going to start a new row. So we got to start chain six. Two, three, four, five, six. Take our little block, rotate him. And if you don't want to count from the hook down, count from your blocks up so you can see the humps on the back of your chain. So one, two, three, and into that third one, we're going to work a double. One, one into the last two chains. So remember, he's kind of wobbling around out there, right? So we want him to lay this way so our edge stays straight. So we slip stitch into that chain three, and now we start a new block chain three. Remember every block starts with the chain three and three double crochets. Oh, I got a knot. There. So now we work three doubles. One, two, and three. Now we got to connect. We got to connect him right here with a slip stitch, chain three, and our three doubles. One, two, and three. And then we just keep working that and keep working that. I'm going to keep doing it with you guys for a little bit. Just so I'm going to get some slack here. Just so everybody understands that, like I said earlier, I don't want to leave anybody behind. I want to make sure everybody understands. Okay, so now that was the third row. So now we go on to the fourth. So we start with our chain six. Three, four, five, six. Rotate. One, two, three. Double into the three chains. Two and three. He's all wobbly. So we gotta slip stitch him to the top. And now we start our new block. Chain three and three doubles two and three. Slip stitch to the next. Chain three, chain three, and three doubles. One, two, and three. Slip stitch around that chain. Chain three, and three doubles. Two and three. So you can see how this is going along, right? We're just up, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And we're going to keep working this until our, you know, you can use your tail as a reference for the corner that we started. I feel like my tape measure is really loud. <laughs> We're going to continue that until our tail to our edge right there measures eight inches. I'm going to go ahead and work one more row with you guys. Okay, so to start our row, we chain six, four, five, six, turn, find your third double, one, two, three, or I'm sorry, your third chain, 
and then we're going to double crochet into that, our third chain, one, and then one into the last two, two, and three. Now remember, we can't have him all wobbly, so what do we do? Slip stitch him to the next. Chain three, two, three, and three doubles around that chain three, two, and three. Slip stitch to our next chain three, chain three, and three doubles. Slip stitch to our next chain three, chain three, and three doubles. One, two, and three. Now we're to our next block. Slip stitch into that chain three, chain three and three doubles. One, two, and three. Okay, and that's the, the basic concept. So go ahead and we're going to keep working that until the corner with our tail to our corner, which it doesn't matter. doesn't matter how you lay it. We just want this corner with our tail to this corner, you know, the opposite corner to measure eight and a half, or eight inches, I'm sorry, eight inches. So go ahead and keep repeating what I was showing you until we get from the, our tail corner to our next corner to eight inches. So I'm going to go ahead and work that and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I just started this new row and I stopped and I measured... And we're close, we're a little over eight inches, but I'm fine with that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this row, but we're not going to start a new row because I want to show you guys what we're going to do to make our corners go up. We're going to decrease. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm to my last block. Not my last block, I mean second to last. So what we're going to do is we want to keep these corners the way they are, right? So I'm going to go ahead and still slip stitch into this chain three. I'm going to show you guys where we are. Okay, so we've got our straight line across here as you can see, I don't want it to go any bigger, right? We're good up here. So now we're going to start closing it. We're going to start working this way. So basically what we're going to be doing is decreasing. So we went ahead and slip stitch to this block. Now we're going to chain one and we're going to turn. Now instead of creating a new block, we're just going to work, you know, keep this straight line. So we're going to slip stitch across here, and then we're going to build a block here, or a little block here, 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 all the way till we get to here. Then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to chain one and then just turn it. So we got our chain one. Now our chain one is going to be our little filler for that double right there. So we're just going to skip that and we're going to go right into this next block, right into that first double. And we're going to work a slip stitch. Loosely, don't do it too tight. So there's one, two, three, and we're going to go right into that chain three. And now we're to building a new block. See how it's coming up now? 
Isn't that cool? <laughs> I hope you guys understand this. I, I really don't want anybody to feel left out or not. I don't necessarily mean left out, but I mean, um, not understanding the concept. Cause I know how that feels not even in the crochet aspect of that. I mean, you know, just in, you know, sometimes in life, there's times, you know, people are talking about things and I'm like, what in the world? I don't like that feeling. So I don't want anyone to feel that way. Okay. So now we just start a new block. Chain three. Oops. One, two, three. Work our three doubles. Now we slip stitch to the chain three of our next block. Chain three, two, oh, come on, three. <laughs> Work our three doubles. I want to show you guys something that I do. I do, um, so everybody crochets different, right? Well, there's a thing that always happens to me. I don't know if it happens to anyone else, but it drives me insane, and I'm going to show you what I do. Okay, so we finish this block. We slip stitch to the next. Work our chain three. Now, if you watch, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna let this block stay up, but I'm gonna show you what always happens to me. So if I double, of course it's not gonna happen. See how like I feel, I feel like I have to work around that next block, and I'm always catching it. That wasn't a double crochet. <laughs> I'm always catching it that next block on it on my hook so what I do as I go I just take my, my middle finger <laughs> I had to look what finger it was my middle finger and I just hold that next block down that way I have a clear space to work on camera <laughs> to and I'm not catching any of the loops of the block I have push down with my finger or that I'm holding down with my finger. I don't know if that happens to anyone else, but it does to me. And so I've learned to like crochet holding most of my work in my hand. And then I just bring the next one up. We're almost to this other end. So I'm going to go ahead and stay on here with you guys. Two, three, slip stitch. One, two, three chains. One, two, three. My stomach just growled. One, two, three. One, two, three. Give me some slack. I looked away for a second. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay, so we're to our end. So I'm just going to slip stitch into this chain three. And I'm going to chain one and turn. We're going to skip this, this one right here. That chain one is going to replace that. So we're just going to skip it and we're going to slip stitch into our three doubles and then right into that chain three. So we're going to skip this and into the next with a slip stitch into the next double with a slip stitch and the next double and then right into that chain three. And now we're ready to start a new block. One, two, three. One double, two, three. 
and three. Okay, so now you can see how we're decreasing and we're bringing these corners together. So the more and more we work, you know, the less blocks we're going to have to make and it's going to come together. So just keep doing that. Work your blocks across, get to your last block, slip stitch into your chain three chain one, turn, and just slip stitch across your three doubles and your chain that will be there when you get to this point. Work your blocks like normal, slip stitch into your chain three, chain one, turn, slip stitch across, and then keep doing that. And eventually it's going to get to where we're only going to have two, we're, sorry, we're only going to have three blocks to fill in chain one, rotate, slip stitch, then two blocks, and then, you know, eventually one block, but I'll, I'll come back whenever I get down, to, oh, excuse me, I have the hiccups, <laughs> whenever I get down to three blocks to fill. So I will um, meet you guys back in a minute. Okay, I'm back, and you can see we're just about done. You can see our square. I went ahead and have slip stitch to that chain three. So I'm going to chain one, turn, skip that slip stitch we just did, slip stitch into that first double, second double, into our third double, into our chain, chain three, and we're starting a new block. One, two, three, slip stitch to that next block, chain three, one, two, three, ah. slip stitch to the next, Chain three, one, two, three, some slack. We're on that last block. If you guys can hear that, that's my chair mashed against my desk. <laughs> There, now I'm off my desk. Okay, so we're gonna slip stitch here into that chain three, chain one, and turn. Slip stitch across those three doubles we just worked. Into that chain. Now we chain three, work our three doubles, slip stitch, we're just about done. Slip stitch, chain one, and turn, slip stitch across, into that chain three. Now can you guys see? All we gotta do is just work that, let me pull this back, there. All we gotta do is just work this final block, and there's our square. Two, three, one double, two double, and three double. 
slip stitch and there is our square there's our corner to corner square so all I'm gonna do to fasten this off my hook back in there so I'm gonna chain one and cut and there we go there's our corner to corner dish rag or wash rag whatever you call it so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how we're gonna work the um, uh, dish towel and then at the end I'm gonna do the border with you guys so using this cabana so we're gonna do the same concept we're gonna continue working that corner to corner until we get the width we want okay so I'm gonna go ahead and start this again slips knot on my hook and we start with a chain of six one, two, three, four, five, six. Count back three. One, two, three. Into the fourth, or however you want to count. If you want to count from your slip knot. One, two, three. Work into that with a double and a double in the last two. So there's our first little corner. So remember how we how we build up. We gotta chain six. Five, six. Seven. So we chained our six, rotate our little block into the third with a double and a double into the last two. He can't be all wobbly, so we gotta slip stitch him shut. Oop. And then build a new block. Three and three doubles. Two and three. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let you guys keep working this and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna tell you Oh, excuse me. I'm going to tell you how wide I'm going to work this corner to corner, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to, we're not going to decrease, but we're just going to extend to get the good length that we want. So go ahead and keep working your corner to corner, and I'll, when I come back, I'm going to tell you guys the width of how, uh, how long I want it, or like how wide I want it. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. And I've worked corner to corner until my straight edge right here measures just about 13 inches. And that's about as wide as I want to go with this. If you guys want to go wider, just keep working it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this row. Work back up here. And then I'm going to show you guys how we are going to get a rectangle out of working this corner to corner. I'm going to go ahead and finish this and I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and I finished this. I didn't finish it, I stopped right here. Finished that row. Let me back you guys up a little bit. Okay, so we got 13 inches wide. Well, I wanna make it longer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark with a stitch marker that I don't have next to me. Okay, so I'm going to mark this square down here with the stitch marker because what we're going to do is we're going to build on up here and decrease here, which 
I shouldn't say decrease because we're not actually decreasing. We're just building up without building out. So we're just gonna we're just stopping here because to actually decrease like we did on our square, you have to be you have to decrease here and here. So one decrease is working the same stitch here and here. But since we're only doing it here, we're not technically decreasing. We're just stopping and we're just building up. Whereas up here, we're going to still be building up. So we're going to keep that width. We're just making it longer. So get your corner here marked. And it doesn't matter which corner. Just so that we always know at this certain spot, we're not going to build. We're not going to... Um, uh, trying to think of the word I'm trying to I want to say we're not lengthening it we're just building up whereas every time we get to this corner we're building we're making it longer so I'm gonna go ahead and for each time that we get to this end we're gonna work the same thing slip stitch chain three work our three doubles I need to get some slack So our three doubles, and we're going to start a new one after I get some slack. <laughs> but we're going to do the chain six, uh, one double in the third, and then um, uh, slip stitch it together. And then when we get to the other end, we're going to do like we did on the wash rag. Okay, so we chain six, three, four, five, six turn one two three into the fourth or one two three however you guys want to do it so we're basically combining the two thing two um, oops I put two and one combining the two ways I showed you guys on the wash rag into our dish towel. So we go ahead and just go like normal. Slip stitch to the next block, chain three, three doubles, so far nothing's changed. So go ahead and continue working your blocks all the way down to the corner with the slip stitch and I'll meet you guys down there. So I'll meet you guys down here. Okay, so I've made it to the block before my stitch marker and this is what we're gonna do for the rest of, the, till we get to the length, well, the length will go on this side of our dish towel. So what we're going to do is just like we did with the wash rag, we're going to slip stitch into the chain three, chain one, turn, slip stitch across our doubles, one, two, three, slip stitch into our chain three space, and then we're going to go ahead and start building another block chain three, three doubles, one, two, and three, and then work our way back up to our other corner. So you can see, you know, we're not necessarily decreasing, we're just building it up. Whereas this side, we are adding length to it. So every time we get to this corner with the stitch marker, which I'm going to go ahead and move mine up, we know to work our slip stitch up the, up the side of our double. And then every time we get to the corner that doesn't have the stitch marker, we work our chain six, double in our three chains, and then work our way back down this side. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep working that, which I mean, you guys should have that down by now. So we're just slip stitching on this side and building up on this side with our chain six. And I'm going to keep working that until I get to the one side is going to be the length. So the side without our stitch marker, I'm going to keep working that till the side without our stitch marker is to, I'm going to say roughly about 18 inches. I'm going to try that and see how I, see how I like it. So I'm going to get that worked and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back and I've worked the pattern to where the long side's now measuring 18 inches and we still have, you know, our flat side coming up. So what we're going to start doing now is what we did, you know, with our dish or our wash rag. So I just went ahead and finish this round row sorry <laughs> so all we're gonna do is chain one and turn and we're gonna slip stitch across these doubles just like we did on the edge that has the uh, stitch, uh, stitch marker slip stitch into our chain three not on camera so basically what we're gonna do now is close this up so we're gonna do like we did on our wash wash rag we're gonna decrease both sides chain one slip stitch and work our pattern and it's eventually gonna close this up One, two, three. So go ahead and keep working like we did, like we did on the wash rag, where we, um, you know, slip stitch on the sides, and come back, and I will um, show you when we get closer to closing this all up. Okay, I'm back, and I'm just about to finish this off two three slip stitch one two three the whole time I've been making this I'm trying to decide which color I want to use for the border three slip stitch chain one turn I can't decide if I want to do, I think I kind of want to do the, uh, what is it, dragon fruit? One, two, three. One, two, three. And we're done. There is our dish towel. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and chain one, pull up a loop, and cut. Alright, I forgot to take my stitch marker out. Okay, I am going to... my needle we're gonna weave in these ends real quick now when I'm weaving in these ends I want to make sure I'm running them underneath one of the clusters of the double crochet if I can get this thing on my hook my needle there so like up, I want to run it through that so I'm just gonna Push it through there. Bring it back.
there. This is getting to be a pain trying to get this on this needle. There. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to run it through these. So I'm just going to bring it through here. go. So now we're going to work on this border. Uh, I don't know which one I should use. I think I'm going to go with the pink. Okay, so to get started with our border, get a slip knot on our hook. And I'm going to just go for one of these, this top corner, and right into that chain space, I'm going to attach my yarn up here. Pull that tight. I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to do five double crochet into that corner. One, two, three, four, and five. Now, if you can see, See right between these two, I'm going to work a slip stitch, or I mean, I'm sorry, a single crochet right in there, right around everything. And now we're to our sideways sit and block, and I'm just going to go right in here and I'm going to work five double. And then right in between, here, let me do this a different way. You see one double, two double, three double? It's the back of the doubles. I'm going to single crochet right between the second and the third double. And that's what we're going to repeat to our corner. So I singled, now I'm going to work five doubles right around that bar. Two, three, four, and five. Now I'm going to single between the second and the third. And now I'm going to work the five double around that chain three right there. And this is going to be the exact same for the wash rag too. So one, two, three, four, and five. Single between the second and the third double. See it? One, two, three. Right between that second and third. 
And now we're gonna five doubles around that bar. One, two, three, four, and five. Single between the th second and the third. Ooh, I like the color. I'm glad I picked the pink. Now around that chain three are five doubles. One, two, three, four, and five. Single between the second and the third. We're going to double around that chain. One, two, three, four, five. Single between the second and the third. So there's the first, second, and third. It's going to go right in there. And then double around that chain. Two, three, four, split that. One, two, three, four, and five. I'm going to single in between the second and the third, shell around that chain, one, two, three, four, five, single between the second and the third, I got a knot. And up right around this chain is going to be our corner. So one, which is no different than just, you know, your normal shell. Three, I'm going to go ahead and rotate. Four, and five. And we're going to do the same thing. Single crochet between the second and the third double and shell around our chain. One, two, three, four, five, single between the second and the third. So I want you guys to go ahead and repeat that all around. When you get to your corners, there's no, there's nothing different, you know. So like on this side, we're going to work down, work down, work down. So here's our uh, three doubles. So we'll single crochet right there and go right into that uh, chain space and work our shell. Rotate. Now we're to the backwards doubles again single between the second and the third shell around that chain and just keep doing it and keep working that all the way around I'll be back whenever I get this done and um, show you guys what I got and go from there okay guys I'm back and I've worked around I've got a little bit I gotta finish but I wanted to show you guys it's laying on the side right now turn it without losing my hook back there Isn't it great? I love it. I'm so happy how it turned out. And the cool thing is, if you lay it on its side, like if you turn it sideways, it looks like a placemat. Like a cute little placemat. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm going to show you guys how we're going to finish this off. Okay. So I'm coming to the end. There's my three doubles single crochet between the second and the third double and I'm just going to come up 
and slip stitch to our first double. Chain one, pull up a loop to weave in, and we're done. Now for the wash rag, it's the same thing. I have along the short edge, I'm not going to count the corner, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm not going to count that corner. Same thing on the other short edge, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then on the long edges, I am going to count the corners, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, so along your long edges, counting each corner, counting both these corners, there should be thirteen shells. And then along the short edges, not counting the corners, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then on your, oh, I'm sorry, I bumped the camera. On your wash rag, not counting the corners. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So without counting the corners at all, five, five, five. And there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed. This was fun. And I, if you guys have any questions at all, or if I didn't explain, you know, the concept of corner to corner very well, let me know. My email address is in the description box. Send me an email and let me know what you guys think or leave me a comment and tell me how you guys liked it or join my Facebook group and send me pictures of what you guys make. Um, all of that info information is in the description box below. Uh, I appreciate you guys for watching and uh, subscribe if you haven't, please. Thank you. Very much appreciated. Hit that thumbs up. Leave me a comment and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.